acting inauthentically or acting in a sense unethically almost grants someone the license to continue that behavior in other realms. I think one of the reasons I'm drawn to studying emotions is that I think you study what you don't know. Uh, <laughs> I'm uh, curious about what happens, I think, when you, when you hit these extremes of highs and lows and how you go about managing those. I worked in customer service occupations, and so I was that person who had to paste on um, a happy face, even though I really wasn't feeling it on the inside. Turns out that surface acting or faking it has all sorts of nasty side effects on people doing that behavior. We, in three studies, uh, examined employees and we wanted to see what happened when they engaged in surface acting if they were to engage in more unethical behavior. And in fact, that's what we found. It's something that we refer to as the slippery slope effect. It's as if you do something that is unethical or deviant or that goes against norms, it gives you sort of a moral license to do more of something like that. There are all sorts of jobs and situations that might call for negative displays. A manager expressing disappointment uh, or even anger at an employee's poor performance. We set out to study a group of managers and we tracked their emotional displays with their employees over several weeks. What we thought would happen, happened. Um, faking positive emotions was bad for them because it left their actual feelings negative, but the opposite happened when they faked negative displays. And they were more satisfied with their jobs and less exhausted uh, as a result of that. So I don't think it's the case that everyone should just be positive all the time. There are some advantages and benefits to expressing and even feeling negative emotion. So I, I just think we need a deeper conversation about both the advantages and the disadvantages of, of each type of emotion because the workplace is an arena for emotional expressions of, of all types these days. If you open up a textbook, I mean, most students don't flip to the very back and look at the notes or the references, but everything that they're reading is coming from some larger body of literature. And so what the research angle does, I think, or a focus or an emphasis on bringing research into the classroom is it encourages students to think about how do you acquire knowledge effectively in the first place. There are actually people doing research to create this knowledge and then in the classroom we disseminate it.